Now let's examine how to solder wires into cup terminals. To properly size the wire, we'll insert a piece of solder into the cup and bend it over the top. We'll use this as a gauge to determine the wire length, leaving additional room for insulation clearance. One wire diameter is the target insulation clearance. For minimum insulation clearance, the insulation may contact the top of the cup, but should not interfere with the solder wetting on the inside of the cup terminal. Maximum insulation clearance should be less than two wire diameters, or 1.5 millimeters, whichever is larger. As you can see, the insulation clearance in this example is excessive and should be corrected before we solder this connection. Now we're ready to place the properly stripped and pre-tinned wire into the cup and secure the wire using a third hand tool or equivalent. The conductor should be fully inserted into the cup, touching the back wall for its full length. Next, we'll place a large, freshly clean chisel tip against the back of the cup to transfer heat into the terminal. The reason we use a clean tip rather than a tin tip is to avoid adding any solder to the outside of the cup. In some cases, external solder on the outside of the cup can reduce the electrical clearance between the cups below the minimum acceptable requirement. Now, we're ready to insert the solder wire into the cup opening. We'll start by touching the solder between the wire and the cup to form a heat bridge. Then, we'll move the solder wire over to the center of the cup to avoid touching the left or right edges. This will help to minimize the chance of spilling over as the cup fills with solder. The solder wire and soldering iron tip are then removed from the cup at the same time. It's important to leave everything still until the solder solidifies. Another method is to place the tip of the soldering iron across the front of the terminal. The tip should contact two heat transfer points on the edges of the cup. Then feed the solder in over the top of the tip. If excessive solder is used, it will spill down the sides of the cup. If insufficient solder is used, the solder connection won't have the required mechanical strength. At this point, we'll clean off the flux if required. Here's what an acceptable solder joint will look like. The wire is inserted to the full depth of the cup, in contact with the back wall, and there is an insulation clearance from the top of the cup to the insulation on the wire. The solder contains no dips or recesses within it and hasn't spilled over and down the sides of the cup. We also need to check that there is no buildup of solder on the outside of the cup, where the soldering iron made contact. If there is a small quantity of external solder, it should be a smooth film with no bumps. When the solder volume is correct, the fillets will be slightly concave and show good wetting on all the surfaces. Unlike the other terminals, the outline of the wire is not required to be visible inside the cup. When excessive solder is used, solder buildup on the outside of the cup can negatively affect the form, fit, function, or reliability.